Hello ladies and gentlemen, I want to say something of some difficult joints. The best is to show you using Oracle. And my login is saved from before. Wonderful, type up some SQL. Right, so let's try a couple of really simple queries. Select everything from ACK. Oh no, I'll use cost because cost has names of people in it. And we can see a list of what well, accounts that customers have and information about those customers. But if I try the same thing with GustAC, I'm gonna see the same reference numbers, except there's fewer rows of data. So can't correspond exactly, but I can join those two tables together. To select every column from, okay, what was it? Cost in uh, join custac join doesn't work that's because i need to say which columns are connected to which but i'm going to open cust and custac cust there is this this reference number of the customer and in custac there is also this ref note they are, I think, of the same data type. Quick check, char for, yeah, same data type. So I need to do the join on cost dot ref no equal custac dot ref no. And there's my join. It shows me that reference number A123 has this account number. Reference number B127 and B128, this address, this account. So far, so good. I'm going to do this simple experiment where it says inner join here. I'm going to remove the word inner and instead I'm going to write full outer. If you're a little confused, don't worry about it. Simply type it in. The worst that can happen is there'll be an error message. Right, no error message. This time there's more data. Wait, there's more reference numbers of customers with their addresses and areas. But then the refno acno here, that contains only four rows and some blanks. What are those blanks? That is for the information where there is a customer, but no corresponding account. And that's what the outer join does. Now, there's several kinds of outer joins. There's the full one here, which is the most complete one. And then there is a left and a right one. It's difficult to explain on the screen, so I'm going to use a board. There is a left and a right and a full outer join and it's difficult to explain them um, without actually drawing on one of these things. Imagine that you had two tables, one that tells you a list of countries so the country's name and their population. I'll call it uh, up. And in it you get information like uh, uh, Afghanistan and Albania. I did it recently, so now I know all the world's countries in alphabetic order. All the way to Zimbabwe. If I can write W. Uh, but, but I forgot to name populations. Yeah, let's pick some random figure. figure. I have no idea really. And the second table, we need a second table to be able to understand what's going on here. A second table of information like eh, countries and how many people have confirmed cases of COVID-19.
and uh, there'll be Afghanistan but maybe it's written differently like AFG because it's shorter and Albania and plenty of other ones and maybe Zimbabwe is missing maybe because no one's got COVID-19 in Zimbabwe and here uh, you know there'll be a figure I'm making them up and what we want to do is join this information the two tables define three sets okay two they define two sets but the two sets in the lock like this So populations give you a set of data about countries' population and oops, I call that pop, but that would be conf. And uh, conf gives you another set of data. If you join the two, you're going to get some things that correspond. Like for example here, there's no problem with finding out the population and the number of cases, confirmed cases, for Albania. That's because, um, well, the two match. So when you do an inner join, you get all of the information Where, where there are matches but I said there are two interlocking sets without two interlocking tables without two tables that are joinable one set is all of those countries where we've got information about the population but not about the number of confirmed cases like for example Zimbabwe population but no known confirmed cases not in the list anyway can i write a w do you think so zimbabwe is over there and on this side you've got uh, there's an interesting one you got AFG because AFG is a named country there, which is not in the other table. Oh, and on that side, you've got Afghan because the name Afghan that exists there is not in the other table. You know, both of these are Afghanistan and somehow someone didn't type this up right and so when we try to get the information to correspond well we're losing we're losing our data somehow right what about the joins well the information that is there or rather this bit the inner join plus the information that is on the outside of the join on the left side we say this doesn't uh, you can't read this here you don't need to see the top of my head do you we call that the left outer join and the bit from here to here that will be 
the right outer joint. That's it. That's the difference between the left outer joint and the right outer joint. Oh, and there is a full outer joint. The full outer joint is the whole thing. Here, let's make it in two colors because it's so much better. Was simple. Anything else to say? Yes. Why do I call this one left and this one right? Because as it happens, this table is the one I drew on the left and this is the table I drew on the right. And if I wrote down my join and typed it up, I would probably type up pop inner join conf on pop.country equals conf.country. What if I had the funny idea of typing up conf in a join pop? Well, in that case, I would be placing conf on the left and pop on the right. And what I'm now calling my left join would be on the right. And what I'm calling my right join would be on the left. The idea would be the same. It's just that I just stumbled on putting pot on this side and conf on this side and so pops left and conf is right. Otherwise uh, it doesn't matter which is which. So the left join and the right join are completely interchangeable. The left join is the one where you want all the data from the table you have put on the left. All of this and some of the data that you have on the right and the gaps that is here the data from this table with gaps from the right one and the right join is the one with all of the data from the conf table from the right hand table and some gaps showing data that is in this table missing in the other one. Then there's the fool that is both of those. That's it. Let's uh, return to TechPub. Now that we've got the query, it would be a good idea to actually have a look at what we can do with this uh, kind of information. First of all, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup. Instead of showing the reference number, name, address, etc., and the reference number from the other table again, since they are the same reference number anyway, I'm going to make sure that I show, let's see what have we got, ref, no, name, address, area, no need for ref, no again, act, and no. just so that we can see our data a little bit more simply. Oops, colon ambiguously defined. What did I do? Uh, cost ref no equal cost. Ah, I know. This ref no here. It's not very obvious for the machine whether it is cost ref no or cost dot ref no that we're asking for. And of course we know that the two are equal and so it really wouldn't matter. Here, I'll put cost.refno because cost.refno had a couple of blanks here. Right, okay, so here, when, there, when the customer has no account, their account number is missing. But the rest of the time, we've got all of the customer's data plus the useful data from the second table, which is there. Is that it? How can I do the same thing but obtain only that row and that one to pick up only certain rows of data we normally use where so i'm going to use where 
And the peculiar thing here is that in the account number, there is no value. Where ACNO, how do we indicate we want those values where there is a blank? We use null, but with null, we can't use the equal sign. Instead, we use is, and there's our data, just the two rows where we have some customer information for customers who do not have accounts. Or maybe accounts that were cancelled a long time ago and we need to clean this up or even an error. What else can I do? If I replace the is null with is not null, I should get everything where there actually is an account. But if you actually think about it, we've reproduced in a complicated way what we already knew how to do with the inner join. There's my wife's voice behind. If we are looking for no blanks, then the inner join is an easier option. We can experiment with the left outer join and the right outer join here. Here, let's do a quick one. If I put left instead, Ah, uh, the where account number is null is stopping me from seeing the interesting information here. We're getting all of those cases where the table on the left, where cost is the important table, and so we get all of the information from the cost table, even if there are blanks in the table on the right, so the cost stack table. And that's the same as last time. There are some customers that have no accounts, but there aren't any accounts that don't belong to any customers with uh, accounts that belong to customer numbers of customers that don't exist. That would be, that would be what it is. In fact, if I do a write out to join, as a right out to join and the right out to join is showing me no null values at all no null values in there the customer data no null values in the accounts we get all of the account numbers and their customers and we would get null the customers if there were account numbers that correspond to customers that aren't recorded in the database. In this case, the right outer join and the inner join are giving us the same result in effect. An easy way to, to deal with it if you are unsure whether to use a right or a left outer join is to do a full one. Another way is to experiment with both. One more final test of queries using the idea of the inner versus outer join. Some people sometimes use a, an old-fashioned way of writing the inner join out, which is to do this. Give me the data from the two tables, and instead of the on statement, I write where. And this will give us the same result as if I was doing an inner join. Data from the two tables, the WHERE statement is basically picking up the rows for which the customer reference number is the same as the reference number in the CUSTAC table because I'm showing all the other ones. There's the data I'm showing. Cust ref no, there it is. Name, address, area, account number, and that would be CUSTAC.REFNO which is being used to do the comparison, but not shown, being used to do the join, but not shown. So what's the difference between this and doing an inner join? Not much. In fact, in early versions of the SQL language and SQL systems, this was how you did a join. But you can't do an outer join this way. What would be the where statement? Give me everything from cost and cost stack 
where cos.refno has no corresponding value? Can't do it. Have to do a join of the two tables and specify that what I want is the outer join of the two tables. Okay, so overall, outer joins are surprising, but they aren't that complicated to understand and they're very easy to experiment with. Once you have tried to do an inner join, just replace the word inner with full outer and see the results. You'll understand what difference they make. They work very nicely in combination with the use of is null, is not null. Is null, not is nil. Especially when we want to obtain only the information when there is a lack of matches. They are a good way of picking up special data, picking off errors in data. Okay, hope you find this useful. The outer join is often one of those things that people get a little confused about or, or worry that they wouldn't get right. It really is just a matter of testing and practicing. Thank you. I hope you stay well and practice. You find this information useful. Bye.